Hey everybody, I want you guys to check out my new baby moose skull that I got from my office. Now, Karina and I have been in this house for a year and a bit, a year and three months, and we're finally starting to feel like it's homey and we've got like the decorations up and everything's feeling great, which means, of course, that we're gonna go start traveling. And so I wanna talk to you for a few minutes about real estate investing and how we do it and how you could get started for as little as a $10 investment. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Levi Woods, this is Drawbridge Finance. It is so amazing to have you here to join me because I have this channel so I can share my story of my wealth building and how I was able to become a 40 year old retiree. Now, my birthday's not for another two weeks, I'm officially turning 40, but this was the year that I actually was able to retire from my day job. What happened was my dividend investment portfolio finally exceeded my monthly expenses. The amount that I collect in dividends every single month literally covers my living expenses. And I'm not talking about like just, you know, regular, I'm a hermit, living, sleeping on my couch, watching TV, eating cornflakes kind of retiree. You know, it's really the only way you can get this to taste any good once you put that much water in it. Mm pepper. It also needs pepper. All right, that's a little bit better. Now, as I was saying before, it's I don't want to be one of those retirees that's forced to eat mushroom soup every day. I want to travel. I want to eat well. I want to hang out with my friends. I want to go to events. I want to drive a fancy car. These are things I want to do. And those are things I wish for you as well. It's I just wanted to talk to you guys about uh, spending money for a few minutes because we're up here on this ridiculous lighthouse and uh, one of the things that I like to spend my money on is travel. If you guys are brand new to this channel, you should be hitting subscribe because you get to follow along with me and we're going to make some amazing investment decisions while we're traveling. It does not just taste like deep fried. Oh. So excited, we just bought this out of the back of a car. Lao Lao. I'm gonna take you guys on the road and we're gonna be investing while we're traveling and I think that's gonna be pretty exciting. I am not some real estate guru trying to tell you to go out and buy 20 houses and have rental income. That is not the way that I did this. My journey was a lot simpler than that. I utilized REITs, which are real estate investment trusts, to actually gain my income slowly over time and I didn't have to be a landlord. I didn't have to worry about collecting rent. I just put money into these real estate funds. And today I'm gonna to show you the math on why these real estate funds are such a good investment and how they're able to pay out such high dividend returns to their shareholders. So of course, we're gonna take a look at the math because that's what I do. I always substantiate everything that I do with math. So today I've put together a spreadsheet and I've got my characters. We're only gonna use three of them today. We're gonna to use Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Now all three of them are gonna be given the exact same situation. They're all gonna be given $231,000 in cash in a bank account. And that's where they're gonna start. And they're gonna see how much revenue they can gain in only one year with real estate investing. Now, I know I started this video saying that it was only $10. That was the minimum buy-in. So if you guys don't aren't interested in the math, just skip to the end of the video and you can look at my stock pick as to, and to see exactly what stock I'm buying. Before you do that, I think it's important that you understand why these companies are able to make the returns that they're able to make and why they're able to pay them to their shareholders. Now, Alice and Bob are gonna do the same thing. They're both gonna buy a house. I'm trying to keep all this math super, super simple. So the house value is gonna be $231,000. Alice and Bob are gonna buy one house each. Then they're going to have $2,000 of cash that they're generating that they're going to be able to use to do whatever they want. Alice, she's gonna just say, I wanna buy this house outright. I wanna be mortgage free. Now this is a huge goal for tons of tons of people. I mean, I grew up in a house where my mom wanted to pay off her mortgage. It was like such an important thing for her. 
And it was really difficult back then. Mortgage rates were really, really high, but we're in a situation now where mortgage rates are really, really low. I'm gonna to try to stay away from investing in the stock market in this particular video because I wanna show you how even a very safe, guaranteed, no risk investment like a bond can actually generate more income if the investment is done correctly. So Alice and Bob, they're both gonna buy the house. Now, Bob is gonna put 20% down payment. He's gonna take $46,000 from his $231,000 bank account and he's going to put it as a down payment towards the house. Then he's gonna take a mortgage. The mortgage is gonna be 185,000 and he's gonna be at a fixed 30 year rate of 3.68%. His bank account balance will now be 185,000. Alice is gonna pay for the house outright. She's gonna have no monthly mortgage expense, which means that she's gonna be able to take the $2,000 that she has every month and put it into an investment. She can buy bonds with those every month. But she has a zero balance in her account. She's taken the whole 231 to buy the house. So she starts with zero account balance. And her house investment is 231,000. Now Bob's house investment is only 46,000. The rest of the money is also invested, but it's just invested at this lower rate. And that's gonna be at a bond rate of 2.15%. Now we're gonna look at some data. So I did some research. Here's a chart of median sale price of houses sold in the United States going back to the 1960s. And you can see this chart is just going up and up and up. And we saw like a little bit of a recessionary period here. The house prices dropped down in 2008. And these gray bars are recessions. So we can see when the recessions were. And we're are likely going to be in another recession sometime soon because they happen at a regular interval and we are due for one so it could happen anytime in the last couple years there's been a little tiny bit of a decline according to this chart so now let's take a look at another one this is uh, on Zillow it's saying that the average price right now is 231,000 and the one-year forecast is a 3.4 percent increase so here's another Zillow one and this goes back a little bit further to the mid 90s and we can see right here it states a 3.6% average annual growth. Now this is really interesting because one of the things we have to take into consideration is the investing environment right now. Now I said before, my mom, she really wanted to pay off her mortgage. Well, when I was a kid, mortgage rates were in like the 15 percentile. They were ridiculously high. Now, if we look at a chart of the last 30 years, you could see in the United States, back in the 1990s, we were paying 10% mortgage rates. These have steadily decreased. And I thought to myself, well, I want to see, is there a correlation between these two? So I, I com combined these two charts together. And so this line that is uptrending is the house prices going up. And this line that's downtrending are the mortgage rates going down. And I wanted to see if there was any correlation. And, and really, I think there's a little bit of flatline correlation here in the middle. Now, maybe there's a bit of correlation there. The house prices weren't increasing quite as dramatically, or maybe I'm just reading into this chart, but we're, we're seeing an uptrend. But the real key takeaway here is that the interest rates are at all time lows. We are well below 4% right now. So if there's an opportunity to get into real estate investing, the time is now. If you can lock into a 30 year investment, knowing that those rates could go up and up and up and you could be locked into a really low rate, that would be an amazing time to get into real estate, which is why I love them right now. We know that the house prices are going up. So I'm just gonna flash forward one year and we're gonna look at where the characters are. We're gonna see how much money they have. They had 231,000, they're putting in $2,000 a month for 12 months, so they'll have a total initial investment of 255,000. Now, after one year, let's just take a look. So the asset value, the house, has gone up from 231 to 238,977. Now, this is a 3.4% increase. It doesn't matter that Bob owes money on the house and that Alice doesn't, the house value still increased. This is just basic economics. If the, the house value increases, has nothing to do with the amount of money still owing on it. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the bank balance. Alice has been putting in $2,000 a month and, that, and she's been investing it in bonds at the 2.15%. And so she's made a little bit of interest and her bank balance is $24,000. Now, Bob had a bank balance of $185,000. He's been paying the mortgage payments, which are around $850 a month, but he's also been putting in $2,000 a month. So at the end of the year, he's still got $202,000. His, his bank account has actually gone up 
similarly to Alice's. And the mortgage has gone down. Now, not a lot because this is the very first year and we know that in the first year of a mortgage, we pay a ton of interest. So knowing that we're doing this only on one year, I just wanna see what, what the difference is. So the net worth difference, the total $255,000 investment, Alice was able to turn it into 263,000. And Bob was only able to turn his into 260,000. Alice made $3,000 more. Now the math on this is so simple. We know that both houses were appreciating at 3.4%. But we also know that Bob was only had some of his money appreciating at 2.15% in the bonds, and he was paying a mortgage of 3.68%. So the, more, the, the interest was higher, the yield on the investment was lower than the inflation rate of the house or the expected value increase of the house. And of course, he's not going to keep up. That is, that is just basic, basic math. If the investment returns less than the mortgage, then a person that has a paid off mortgage will make more money in the long run. Now, I kind of have been avoiding this, but I'm going to throw in the third character. So Charlie looks at this situation and he says, well, I've got $2,000 a month coming in. The mortgage payment on one house is only 850 bucks. What if I bought two houses? What if I took the $46,000 down payment that, that Bob did and he, and he did two of those? So that's exactly what he's gonna do. He's gonna buy two houses for $231,000 each. So now he has way more assets and he's got a second house that he can rent out. So we're gonna assume in this scenario that he's gonna rent it out for not very much money, $500, that's it. 500 bucks, which is very, very little. Now, I, I picked that number as a really low number because I wanna make sure that, you know, we're covering things like extra expenses and extra insurance and upkeep of the house and all those things that you have to do as a landlord. So I, for this scenario, I'm just gonna use that really, really low number. So the details are, he's got 20% down payment or $92,000. He's got $370,000 in mortgage at 3.68% fixed in a 30 year. And he's got $139,000 still in the bank balance at 2.15%. So his total investment is 92,000. I'll show you a chart of how these numbers are calculated. This is the generic part. We've got a monthly deposit of $2,000, investment increase at 2.15%. Uh, the projected annual value of the house is 3.4%. The current house value is here at 231,000 at month zero. 12 months later, the house is worth 238,000. And we were talking about the amount invested. So originally it's 231,000 and then an additional $2,000 a month. So by month 12, we're at 255,000. Now that's for all, all three characters. Now, Alice, she had an account balance of zero and it goes up. Her bonds are yielding a, a few dollars a month and that's increasing while she's depositing that money and her net worth is increasing. So you can see her, uh, her investment return and a percentage wise, so we can compare, uh, after one year, her investment in has increased 3.22%. Now, Bob, on the other hand, he had an account balances of $185. The interest that he was making off of that was 300 bucks a month. He had a mortgage remaining. He was making those payments out of this account balance, and, but he had $2,000 still going into the account. So here's the account balance going up, but slowly, and his net worth going up, and his net worth increase going up, but not nearly as fast. He was only able to to generate 2%. If we look at the same chart for Charlie, he's got account balance of 139. He's earning only $250 in bond interest. In this chart right now, I have the rental income at zero. The mortgage remaining is at 370,000 and the net worth is 231,000. After one year, he's got a 2.16%. He has two houses that are both gaining 3.4% every single year. And one of them is generating rental income, which is amazing. So if we just scroll down, I, I'm just gonna scroll way down on this chart just to show you. Now, if you wanna get into the details of these charts, it's really easy. All of my $7 and above patrons get access to these files. So I upload the files to my Patreon page. If you guys are interested in playing around with these numbers, it's really easy. Just become a patron with seven bucks. You can download that digital file, plus all the other ones that I have available. I have quite a few of different mortgage calculators, uh, return on investment calculators, uh, mortgages versus investing. And it, for seven bucks, you can download all of those. So I would suggest going over and checking out my Patreon page because I make free posts about stocks. I mean, yesterday or today, I closed a stock trade that made 8% overnight. And my patrons were 
were told about it yesterday when I placed that trade, and then today when I closed it, 8% gain in only one day. And that, that's kind of the benefits of being a patron, and that's how people learn, is they learn from people like me that have been trading for almost 20 years. Wow, Jesus, I've been trading for a little bit longer than that. I've been trading for 24 years now. All right, well, so this chart, let's get down to it. I'm looking for a green highlight. And here it is, in month 275, this is when Charlie's account, his net worth actually exceeds Alice's and Bob's. Charlie has the advantage of having two houses that are appreciating and a debt that's going down and is at a fixed rate. So he has the advantage of being able to catch up with her. It took him 275 months, but that is with zero income, zero income whatsoever from that second property. I'm gonna put this rental income in at $500, like we said, and hit enter. And you'll see that in month one, he's already exceeded Alice's net worth. His net worth is 233,923. Hers is only 233,654. It literally took him one month of collecting rent to make more money than her. And this is the exact same investment allocation at the very beginning, this is. 231,000 and then $2,000 a month. In this chart, we can even go crazier. What if he bought five houses and he was making 500 bucks a month? Well, a big red comes up here. He wouldn't have enough money to do that for very long. He'd, after five months, he would have to ha be making either more than $500 per month off of each home or he would have to find some other source of income. So that's not realistic. But what if he did like four at these rates at these $500 a month? Is he in any danger? Not really, He's have, he has a, a bank account that is growing every single month, not decreasing when he has four houses that he buys. And this is the crazy thing about real estate. So now, the, I wanted to show you guys this because I think the important thing in here is that there are companies out here that do exactly that. They are going out, they are buying commercial properties, they are leveraging the money, they are taking a small amount of investment money, they are purchasing properties with mortgages, they are getting renters, they have that rental income, the property values are increasing, the, the number of properties are increasing, the mortgage rates are fixed, and they are just a license to print money. And these are huge returns. Let's just look, like if Charlie had four houses, after five years, he's made a 39% return on just having four homes generating only $500 a month. Now, if we were, if these were really nice homes and they were able to make $900 a month, which I don't think is a far stretch, uh, after five years, made a 60% return. This is like more than 12% per year. This is a massive amount of money. And it's why real estate investment trusts are able to pay out dividend payouts of eight, nine, 10% at a time. Now I said at the beginning, I was gonna tell you how you can start investing for only $10. So I'm gonna show you one of my favorite stocks. Now if you're just starting in investing and you don't actually have an account, why don't you sign up for an account? I've got a couple of links down in the description, uh, like Webull, if you sign up using my link, you get a free stock. I mean, that's pretty amazing. I think you get a free stock up to $1,000. And now I'm also sure I have some Canadian subscribers in here too. So if you're looking for the only platform that offers absolutely free buying and selling of shares, you should check out Wealth Simple Trade. You get an extra five bucks and you can buy these stocks. So here is the stock that I'm pulling up. Now I said $10 was an investment. Today, the price of this share is $5. So you could buy two shares now, the beautiful thing about this is that it pays a dividend every single month. Now, it is on the Canadian exchange. Here's the ticker, btb-un.to. It's BTB Real Estate Investment Trust. Now, these guys are doing exactly what I just explained. They are buying properties, they're renting the properties, they're collecting the income, they're being the landlord, and they're paying you a huge amount of money. The dividend yield is 8.42%. And if you're wondering if they're able to continue to sustain and pay that, of course they can, because I just showed you all the math on how they're leveraging money. So they take your $5 and they take everybody else's $5, one $5 at a time, and they collect all the money and then you buy more properties. If you do it over time, if you decide to invest $10 a week or $10 every day, all of a sudden you get to see this income start to be generated 
every single month. And that's how I was able to get to the place where I am today. Now, the reason I'm giving you this information is because we can all get rich together. You buying stock does not hurt me in any way. That's why we, I can show you things like this. It's amazing. That's the power of the internet and it, it's the power of dividend growth and the community that we're, we're a part of. So if you'd like to be part of the community, remember to hit the subscribe button down below, turn on that notifications bell so you never miss an episode. And we're gonna, we're gonna get to go traveling very, very soon. I haven't told you where yet, so you'll have to stay tuned to see us on our next trip. Thanks so much for watching and see you very soon.